Hey guys, it's your friendly neighborhood reviewer with Intuit Reviews. Welcome back to the neighborhood. Today, we're taking a look at the One More Triple Driver Over Ears. This is a unique headphone, both in build and in sound. But I don't know if there's a better closed back under $200 right now. So let's get into it. Well, we'll start things out with the build, and for the price, it's pretty spectacular. This headphone is made out of mostly leather or metal, and it's strong and sturdy. Because they gave these away if you bought a particular Maserati, the grill of the headphone supposedly looks like the hubcap of that particular car, and I dig the style. The ear cups are small, and so are the pads that come with the triple drivers which is good for portable use, but suggests that these are on-ear headphones for most people in their stock formation, rather than over-ear ones as their name implies. But more on that in a moment. The ear cups also fold in for storage, and the headphones also come with a nice, rather rugged, hard shell carrying case that appears protective, but also on the chunky side for a daily commute. Available colorways include the silver, which I purchased, or a rose gold variant. Returning to the ear pads, they come adhere to the ear cups, which is a major oversight by one more, in my opinion. But the pads are also made out of a comfortable memory foam if you have itty bitty baby ears and they fit inside the opening. Unfortunately, my ears are on the medium to medium large side and as a result, they did not fit. As such, I wore them as on-ears to start with, but ultimately the clamp was also uncomfortable even though the pads were plush. My ears began to hurt and they would get red after about 20 minutes of use. The clamp really isn't that forceful on its own, so if you have small ears, this won't likely be an issue for you, but for me, the pad swap was a must. But, as the stock pads came glued on to the headphone, I had to destroy them in order to make this pad adjustment. Luckily, there is a plastic mounting ring underneath the backing of the glued on pad. Using Goo Gone and some elbow grease, I was able to remove the plastic mounting ring from the original pads, clean them up, and then mount Brainwave's round sheepskin pads onto the ring instead. But be forewarned, this takes a lot of work, the final result isn't a perfect fit, and it is irreversible, destroying the original pad in the process of this modification. Having said that, for people with normal sized ears, you may find that this modification is a must from a comfort perspective, and you should therefore prepare yourself in advance for the strong possibility of having to undertake this mod if you decide to purchase a one more triple driver over ear. The outcome of this modification is that the fit of the Brainwave's rounds on the mounting ring is good enough. The pad openings are just big enough for my ears, and it maintains the look, feel, and sonic capabilities of this headphone, all while restoring the comfort to it. Although the cans can still fit into the carrying case after this modification, it does squish down the pads a bit when you zip up the case. So I wouldn't recommend storing the headphones in this case in the long term if you make this adjustment. But back to the rest of the build. The headband is also made out of metal, appears to be wrapped in a high quality leatherette, and has a plush square padding lining its underside. Although the padding was sufficient, a pressure point does form at the top of my head with extended use most likely due to the headband itself being rather slight in its width. There is some swivel to the yokes, and they rotate inwards more than they do outwards, but they do not lie flat. Another oversight by one more. Both the ear cup connections and the termination of the wires are marked with white for left and red for right, which was a nice touch by one more and did not go unnoticed by this reviewer. 
The stock cable initiates at the ear cups via two 2.5 millimeter plugs and terminates in a 3.5 millimeter TRS connection. It also comes with a quarter inch adapter and is about four feet long and made out of OFC copper. It is a rather short cable, which like the other characteristics of this headphone, suggests that the manufacturer was targeting portable use. From a design perspective, there are many unique aspects about the build in terms of its driver configuration. It has a small ceramic plate piezoelectric driver for the highs and a 40mm graphene coated mylar driver for the mids and the bass reproduction. There is also a passive radiator added to enhance the performance of the low end. So this is a very unique and interesting driver construction indeed. And here's the kicker. It's integrated well for the most part and produces a relatively unique sound signature due to this design. So let's shift gears a bit. If you're new to the channel, welcome. But if you've been around for a while, you may have noticed that I rarely comment on the unboxing experience. However, in this instance, it was quite exceptional, so I must. The outside of the box actually appears rather pedestrian and consists of a simple cardboard sleeve, which pictures the headphones and encases the box. The box itself, however, can best be described as a vinyl presentation box. If you've unboxed the Sennheiser HD600 series, it appears quite similar at first glance, but then you open the flap by releasing the rose-colored gold magnet to reveal a beautiful schematic pencil drawing of the headphone and its driver configuration, which is etched onto a manila paper underneath the cover which lines the box. To the right of these drawings sits the case, with the moniker One More embossed on the top. The headphones themselves reside in the case ready to go, with the wire wrapped in a velcro attached mesh that is adhered to the inside lining of the top shell of the case. It was quite the impressive unboxing experience, and it really felt like I was unboxing a premium product, worth much more than the price I had paid. At the time of this review, I was able to find deals for this headphone on Amazon between $135 and $184. I think I paid around $130 from Drop though, and considering the build, the presentation, and the sound, I definitely think I got my money's worth. So how do these sound? In general, they have a present mid-range and offer a load of details for the price point, and image well within a relatively large soundstage for a closed back set. And although I hear good things about the AKG 371 and 361, I have yet to hear anything in a closed back can that can keep up with these for under $200. Having said that, separation isn't the greatest. There is some sharpness in the treble here or there, and there are sibilance issues in abundance on certain tracks. Vocals can get shouty at times, and the bass, while great, is a unique looming one which is only for particular people who enjoy this type of presentation. More specifically, I found that female vocals in particular could be somewhat high-pitched or grating on the wrong amplifier. For example, when powered by the THX AAA 789, it could be a bit too intense, sharp, and piercing on occasion. Particular tracks such as White Snake's In the Heart of the Night and journeys separate ways, worlds apart, were simply too much to bear. I wouldn't call this set bright per se, as timbre was more opaque and mildly brittle, but on the wrong amplifier, playing the wrong song, it could be taken as rather prickly. The snare in Pray For Me by Kendrick Lamar and The Weeknd was grating, and the block strikes in Rosa Parks and the scratching in Pink and Blue by Outkast were relatively unlistenable. Furthermore, the sibilant snake did raise its ugly head on Triumph by the Wu-Tang Clan, with the S's, V's, X's, and T's exhibiting particular problems in this mix. 
If you want to know what I'm referring to here, then skip ahead to about 3 minutes and 50 seconds on this song. The lyrics, the track renders helpless and suffers from multiple stab wounds and leaks sounds that's heard. Also, the passive radiator bass does have a certain tone to it. Although this headphone has accuracy in its other regions, the passive radiator bass is definitely a fun component here and not necessarily an accurate one. At times, it sounds like a haze of fog, which does warm over the lower tones of your music. While this is quite a unique feature in the headphone space, it is much more common in speakers, and yet these headphones do exhibit the same general viscous flavor that a passive radiator would emphasize in speakers. So if you like that presentation, then you might like the bass here. In part, because of its attention to detail and bass representation, I found that the triple drivers excelled at both micro and macro dynamics. They were pretty much perfect for the music of the band Tool. At times, it sounded like the listener was standing right next to the bass drum on Danny Carey's drum kit. Because of this passive radiator, I could almost feel the low end strikes of the polyethylene drum head on occasion. Additionally, the triple driver over ear is fairly sensitive and displays a hiss on high impeded sources. Furthermore, it can be overdriven quite easily as well, increasing harshness and sibilance from its ceramic tweeter if overpowered. Because of this, I actually found that the headphone performed best on a smartphone. Again, suggesting that it was primarily designed with portable usage in mind. Paradoxically, I found that the triple driver over-ears did benefit from balanced operation for some reason, however. Usually, added power in sensitive cans means additional problems, but in this case, it seemed to focus the drivers quite well. So balanced, but low-powered sources were best. Perhaps a low-powered balanced source such as the FIO BTR3K might be a good match for an external DAC amp for this device. Unfortunately, I was only able to test the unbalanced operation of the BTR3K at the time of this video, but the pairing was good. My current amp of preference for this set is the Gold Note DS10, however, utilizing an iFi IE match. With this amp, it emphasizes the spaciousness of the triple driver's presentation and curbs its sibilance and sharpness issues with this amplifier's golden honey tones. So given its issues, what are the reasons that I keep this set? Well, it is a somewhat spacious sounding clothes back with a unique tweeter, a unique bass, a present mid-range, and a hearty solid build. Again, these are probably the best clothes backs that I've heard for under $200, even with the sibilance issues at times and the harsh treble on certain tracks. Having said that, on 95% of the music, it is a very enjoyable headphone. But on certain tracks, you might be smashing the next button very quickly. And just a reminder guys, to like, subscribe, and comment and visit the blog, Instagram, Patreon, and Twitter locations for the channel as well. At the 1K subscriber mark, I'll be giving away another set of cost KSC-75s to those that are subscribed at the various locations. By subscribing at additional locations, you'll increase your chances to win by gaining additional entries into the drawing. And with that, I'm out for now.